Good morning, good morning, greetings to you from Maui in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, it's me again. I'm coming to share the word, and it's all about water baptism. I'm just going to go ahead and pray while I wait for friends and families to get on with me. You can invite your friends, families to join us for the word of God is ready to bless you. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We give you praise and honor, thanksgiving, adoration. Thanking you for your love and care upon us, O oh Lord. You are good God. You are awesome. You are wonderful. We can come to you. We can call upon you. You are listening and you do care. Thanking you so much for your love, Lord, to our human race on the face of the earth. You have created us for a fellowship. And I thank you, Almighty God, that you're going to bless us with your word. You're going to make us understand what you, your will and purpose is, O oh God. And we give you praise. We thank you for the gift of Holy Spirit, who is here in our life. Holy Spirit, may you rule and reign. May you teach us as we heal to your leading and your guidance. Thank you for the joy of our salvation in you. I pray for anyone who will be joining me that may not know the way. I pray that your word will be clear, that they will understand the word of God. They will understand the love of God. They will, their life will be transformed by the power of your word. For it is the reason and the purpose why you want us to pray and read the word. Because you people are dying for not knowing the truth. And the truth that is um, releasing today will set us free, will make us be on track to know you and to live in obedience to your will. We give you back the glory, the honor, the praise to you and to you alone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, you can see the lesson, which is uh, at my back. When we're done, if you're interested, you can always request. Give me your uh, address. I can send to you. Or if you're a member of uh, my Bible study, Kaunabata, it's automatically saved in the photos. You can print it out, give it to your friends and families. Okay, let's go ahead. The first scripture for us to look at is in Matthew 28, 19. We are commanded by the Lord to go and make disciples. The word say, go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he, he told his disciples to go and make disciples. So for you and for me, when we come and we believe in the Lord Jesus to be our Savior, this uh, command become ours when we're living on this earth, waiting for His coming back. Those of us who are Christian, those of us who have been born of the Spirit, we know our Lord Jesus is almost here. And He told the disciples 2,000 years ago, that is why every believing, Bible-believing Christians, this command is for us, go and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, the new has come. The new what? The new life. The new life in Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans 3, 23, we are born with sin. We grow up with sin. Sin control us. And we're going to die with sin. God loved the world so much. He look upon the earth. Men trying to come back to him cannot. So he sent this only son, John 3, 16. For those who receive and believe him, he give them. They will not perish, but he give, he, he give them eternal life. Okay, so when we uh, accept the Lord, change by the work of God in our life, we are qualified to do water baptism. 
Okay? When we do water baptism, we're simply telling ourselves that we die to ourselves. We buried our will, our desires, our ego, our own ways, and we want to serve the Lord. We also telling sin that you have no more control over me. We agree with the, what the Bible says, the crucifixion of the Lord, destroy work of enemy, you know? And that's what we're doing when we go for water baptism. According to Greek word, baptizo means immerse, submerge, dip in water, bury in water, bring it up again. Again, that is why little children, we cannot baptize them because we, <laughs> we put them under water, they die. Okay? So baptism is for those who repented. The condition of baptism, we have to first repent of our sin. Turn away from our sins. Live a new life that the Bible says that the Lord bring it to us. And then we can go into water baptism. It's not sprinkling, you know, we find water, deep water that we want to go and dive down. Go under, because that's what it means. Go under, it's like submarine. They go under and they come up. So we submerge, we go underwater and come up with a new life. Okay? So according to scripture, why should we baptize? Why should we baptize? Because first, Jesus commands it, as uh, I already read in that scripture. Matthew 28, 19, he tells us, those of us who believe in the Lord, we all got to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And because we do so, it is our task to do so. Likewise, we disciple those that come to believe in the Lord through our mission, through our service for the Lord. Okay, because uh, Jesus commands us to baptize, that's why we baptize. Ourselves, we have to first baptize after we repented of our sin, accept Jesus into our life, then we go and bury our sins. Okay? And uh, 1 Peter 3.21 is a sign of good conscience. Good conscience. Therefore, in an antitype which now saves us, not the removal of filth of flesh, but the answer of good conscience toward the Lord through resurrection of Jesus. Okay? While I'm sharing, you can discern the work of Holy Spirit, if you haven't accept Jesus into your life, Holy Spirit not yet enter. But God loves you so much that Holy Spirit is close to you. He can convict you. Okay? In Philippians 2.13, it is the work of Holy Spirit. It is the work of God that convinces us to desire for the things of God. Okay? So, out of your good conscience, if you accept the Lord, or the Spirit is inside, and He will help you to, to desire for water baptism if you never done so. Uh, for me, when I was small, I baptized two times. First, when I was a baby, my parents, you know, from stories I heard, my parents, they took me for baptism, they called. But according to the scripture, that was not baptism. When I was small, that was a dedication. So they baptized me in Protestant. And when I grew up, I remember being in eighth grade. My grandma, she's a devout Catholic, and she said, oh no, you're not a Protestant, let's go for baptism again. So I remember walking up to the priest for water baptism. Well, that was their faith, and I respect that. That was their faith. According to the scripture, when I gave my heart to Jesus, in 20, I was 23 years old, and I went to the church, and I hear the teaching of water baptism for the first time. It makes so sense to me, and I use my good conscience, my good judgment, and I said, 
First time I hear, and I just act upon the word. When the preacher was done that day, it was like 700 people in that church. I don't know nobody, but he said, is anyone here want to, uh, want to have a water baptism? I raise my hand, me, out of good conscience, I know I need to do this. Okay, so I went and did my baptism in, in a swimming pool. So that was the baptism I count <laughs> because it's in line with the word. Okay, we do act of water baptism after repentance. Um, while we do water baptism, we want to identify with what Christ did. What Christ did. So I'm going to read Romans 6. Romans 6. 1 to 11. We shall say then, oh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, and we should no longer be slaves of sin. For we who have died have been free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Some of us, like we, when we pray, we tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I wish I died like you. According to the scripture, if we do baptism, water baptism, we, we died with the Lord. We died with the Lord. Okay? According to what we read, we died down. It's like how the Lord buried, and then rise up. It's like, you, you raise up, we come out of the water. Okay? The Lord has to die so we can live. And that's what we do. We go down under the water, and we come up, live a new life, excited, victorious, set free life. And that's what the Lord does. He, he, he doesn't have any sin. He carried our sins to the cross, and then he went to the tomb. Get the key from Satan in hell. Come up and go back to his father. Okay, you and me, we identify ourselves to the death of the Lord through water baptism. That's why some, some people say, oh, I don't need, I already did when I small. Once again, babies cannot baptize. They were dedicated. That was not a baptism. Okay? So we had, the Bible said, by doing water baptism, we identify ourselves to the dead of the Lord. All right, so identify with Christ. Why we uh, baptize? It's an outward expression of inner change. I go around, when I baptize people, you see. You know, some 
some strangers, they walk, they see what's going on. And they will wonder and find out. You testify. You're, you're yourself when you're hearing the teaching and you're convicted, you want to go and water baptize. You yourself affirming you that I am a changed person. Something going on inside of me, which I know it's a new life. I want to show it outside. So I go and go through uh, water baptism. I go and dive down under the water. Why we uh, baptize? Because Jesus himself baptized. Okay? You and me want to be a follower of the Lord. We have to do what he did. We have to do. He healed the sick. That's why you and me praying, healing, releasing power of God to heal the sick. Jesus pray, you and me pray, Jesus praise the Lord. You know, what we see Jesus did, we have to do. Okay? He was persecuted, we have to expect persecution. We have to do what he did. So he was baptized. I want to read that again so that the Bible teaches us we don't have to argue on our own understanding, but we are reading from the scriptures. Okay, Matthew 3, 13 to 17. When Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him, and John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. So, you know, um, we read in the scripture that he came up, came up, came up that way, he went down. He can only went down to make him came up immediately from the water. And behold, heaven were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, a lightning upon him, and suddenly a voice come from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I want to encourage you today. You know, God is well pleased to us. He is well pleased about us. He is well pleased that we can hear the word and we want to believe. That's what happened when John was trying to convince Jesus because John know he is the Messiah. And he said, no, I'm not worthy. You should be the one baptizing me. But Jesus said, no, they have to do it according to the prophets because that's how all the believers are passing down their knowledge and their faith. They hear the word that already been given before them and they follow and they follow in the fulfillment of the prophecies. Okay? So Isaiah already prophesied. Jeremiah already prophesied. So these are New Testament people. They're looking back to the word of the prophecies. And that's how they believe when Jesus came and demonstrated who he was that the prophets already talk about. That's how they believe in the Lord. Amen? So Jesus came up and we just read. Evan Hoban. Evan Hoban. When you baptize and you come up and in your soul agree with the Spirit of God that you're a new creation, you buried your sin and you're up on the surface of the water with a new life, Evan shall be open for you. You read the scriptures. You will have clear understanding. You will have hear the voice of the Lord so clear to you. I have a couple uncles. They serve the Lord. And because of the religion, they know they need water baptism. And they say, oh no, we cannot because we already baptized. It sounds good, but we cannot. We already baptized. And they keep on barking me, telling me every now and then, please write our sermons. <laughs> and that's the problem. You know, when we choose to obey some parts of the word and we only obey some, heaven will be still closed for us. 
when Jesus passed, he came up, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Holy Spirit is not a dove, but he's gentle, pure, you know, what was comparable in an object that can relate to human being, that we can relate to, is look like a dove. Not he, it's but he, Holy Spirit is a person. So, Holy Spirit came upon him, even when God spoke. Okay, this is my beloved. And I want to uh, encourage you today, hearing me, God loves you, and he calls you his beloved also. Okay, so who can baptize those who repent? I'm not going to read the scripture because of time. I'm trying to cut down my lessons uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay? I realize when it's one hour, when the few people are watching, but the lessons are very important. Hosea said, because, uh, not Hosea, but Amos, book of Amos, because we don't know the word, we are perishing, we are dying in sin. So I encourage us, if you don't have desire to hear the word, ask the Lord. Give me desire, Lord, so I can hear your word. Because without us knowing the word of God, we're going to die in our sin. We shouldn't, because he already provided the way. Okay, so who can baptize? Those who repented. Acts 2, 32 to 38. Acts 2, 30, I mean, 37 to 38. Who can baptize? Those who repented. That's why, once again, small kids, small babies cannot baptize. They don't know what repentance is. Who can baptize? Those who have faith. Okay, those who have faith. The Mark 16, 15 to 16. And, of course, good concerns. And those who want to become disciples of the Lord. Matthew 28, 19, he tells us, go and make disciples. So those who, who will say yes to the Lord, Yes, Father, I want to become your disciple. I want to baptize. Okay? In the spirit, what baptism signifies in the spirit? Like, I go and I dive down. That is physical. I go to the lake, to the pond, and I dive down. Okay? To the ocean. I go back down, that is physical. But in the spirit, that act of baptism is a so a self, old self crucifixion. Okay, I, in the spirit, I go and crucify my old life. And according to what I already read in Romans 6, we, we were buried. When we take the act of baptism, we we are identifying ourselves that we buried with Christ. He was buried in the tomb and he resurrected. You and me identify ourselves by go under the water and come up. When we come up, that is resurrection in Christ. Okay, Christ did the pain one, went to the cross, nailed, beaten, bruised inside out, torn off, you know, on his head, blood everywhere, you and me do the easy one. We just go under the water, bear it, and come up. Okay? That's just so to us how God loves us. And uh, in the spirit, what baptism signifies, we bury the whole life, we rise up with Jesus with a new life, and we bear it with Jesus, and we rise up with the new life, and it's a mark of obedience. Okay, John 14, 15, if we love the Lord, we obey. Why we should baptize? Because he command us. He command us, make disciples, baptize them. So if I say, I am a disciple of the Lord, sure and very sure, I should take water baptism. Okay, so when we do water baptism, we are testifying to the church. It's, these are testimonies. We are testifying to the church that I belong. I belong to the body of Christ, which is Christians. 
no born again, spirit filled, water baptism, Christians. Okay? I am part of the new life. I'm testifying to the world that I left you. Okay, so baptism is a testimony. I testify to the body of Christ, believers in the Lord, that I'm part of them, or I'm part of Church of Christ, you know, Church of Worship Jesus Christ. And i done with the worldly life. That's why I go be with my worldly life, worldly desires, worldly uh, sin. And then I'm testifying to the devil. You're no longer my God. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4, 4, God of this world. Okay, Paul said, God of this world are blinded people so they will not see the light of the gospel. So only those who have clear conscience, understanding, help of Holy Spirit will be conflicted and say, yes, I want water baptism. So when you baptize, you are telling Satan, you are no longer part of me. I choose Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Okay, so when we take the step of baptism, we are tes testifying to the body of Christ. We are part of you. We are testifying to the world. I'm done with you. And we are testifying to Satan. You have no more control over me. You are no longer my God. I choose Lord Jesus and follow him. Okay, so when we do baptism, normally we pray for people that we are about to baptize. And then when we go to the water, we hold them, hold their hands, their body, and help them dive down. Okay, go under. As we take them down, we say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, or the Spirit. Okay? Some churches, they say, Jesus only. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. But Jesus, when he about to go, he tells the disciples, go make disciples. Okay? You command his apostles, his disciples, go make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So that's how you and me baptize. And those are the words we say when we baptize someone. Take them down, baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Take them up and just give back the praises in prayer unto the Lord. Okay, so example of uh, those who were uh, baptized, who went through water baptism in the Bible, Matthew 3, 13 to 17, I already read that. Jesus, okay, Jesus. When Jesus was born, eight days after the birth, Joseph and Mary went and dedicated him to, uh, to the prophet Simon. Uh, Simon. Okay, they went and dedicated. So we call that dedication. Small children, Jesus said, don't hinder them but bring them. And he blessed them. He didn't baptize them. Where Jesus talk about baptizes when people are already mature. So when Jesus was 30 years old, he went through that baptism. That telling him that he was about to do his mission. Because after the baptism, if we keep on reading, that's when he started his mission. Okay? Uh, Acts 8.38 Edobian, Enoch, you know, you can read that. Acts 9, 18, Paul also baptized. Acts 2, 41, 3,000 people on that day that Peter preached to them, they believed in the Lord and they baptized. Coronius family, Acts 10, 24, and 48, they also baptized. Okay, so the Bible, close and answer. <laughs> all the arguments that we may have on this topic. Because we grow up in some churches who call it baptism when the kids are small. But according to the scripture, if we are born again, then we are qualified for baptism. If we never receive Jesus into our life, 
that we cannot baptize because baptize come after true repentance. I just want to go ahead and pray and close our Bible study this morning. But if you are watching me and everything sounds so confusing, okay, it's a sign that you need help of Holy Spirit. It's a sign that you need to surrender your heart to Jesus. I grew up, I never know, I grew up in church, I never know th things about God is foolish to me because it's foolishness to a natural man, a person who doesn't have Spirit of God in them. But after I surrender my life to Jesus, I start to understand. I start to understand. So if you are watching me and you never know Jesus, you never even ask him to come inside of your life, you know, you might be leaving, you going to church as a ritual, as a custom, but this God is still far away. You're feeling the void in your heart. Sometimes you go to bed and you're afraid if you sleep and die. Or you go on the road and get into an accident and die. Where are you going to end up? If you're still doubting or questioning your destination after death, that is a sign that you need your Savior. His name is Jesus. If you call upon Him, believe in your heart, call upon Him, you will be saved. That's what He promised. Okay? You and me become righteous through faith and faith alone. We can make a way back to God. God provided our way back to Him by sending His Son into this world 2,000 years ago. He died once and for all. The blood is available for every generation that call upon Him. That's why if you call upon him right now, he will come inside of you as he promised. And after receiving Jesus into your life, and then you can take the step of water baptism. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to go ahead and invite you to say this prayer after me. Being born again into the kingdom of God is simply by prayer. We call it sinner's prayer because we all sin. Fall short of the glory of God. We all need to repent. We all need to say sorry of our sins and accept the forgiveness, which is the blood of Jesus, to wash us, to cleanse us, so that His Spirit can come inside of us and help us walk this new life that He promised for those who are born again in the Spirit. Okay, you can just pray with me. Heavenly Father, I come before you I thank you for your love. I admit I am a sinner. The day I came into this world, living in sin until now, I ask for your forgiveness of my sin. I ask you to wash me with your blood. Come inside of me. Take control of my life. Make me the person you want me to be. Show me your way. Lead and guide me. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I give you praise and honor, thanksgiving, O oh God Almighty. Your presence is so real in our life every day. And I release blessing over that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that may have called upon you, only you know. For you are God that ever present, everywhere, at the same time. You know everything. No one can hide from you. All hurt is just in your bomb, it's just so small. You understand everything, you feel everything, you are spirit being. We bless you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for giving us gift of salvation through Jesus, who qualifies us to become righteous. I pray of the Spirit, I thank you as you promised, you entering that soul and you leading that life that just call upon you now. Heaven will be open and they will desire more of you. They will know you. They will love you. They will start to see the changes that you 
will bring into their life. I thank you for those who are with me today and those who will be tuning in to, to hear your word, O oh Father, or the Spirit convict their life, that those who never take their step up water baptism, they will choose to live in obedience because you command us to go and make disciples and baptize them. Then you, Holy Spirit, you're going to come upon them, you're going to reveal to them many, many things about Almighty God that we never know. We bless you, Lord. We give you back the glory, the honor, the praise to you and to you alone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.